What's up guys, Kyle here again and welcome back to another episode of Viewers Comments. Real quick before we get started, I just wanted to take a second and kind of apologize to you guys because I haven't really been all that active in the comments and you know on the Facebook groups that I usually interact with you guys on. I've been slow to get back to a lot of messages and everything as well lately. Just kind of been going through like a funk where I'm just feeling kind of antisocial not really feeling like engaging with people at the moment. I kind of go through these weird cycles every now and then where I just feel kind of burnout and have a really hard time getting motivation in order to not only do videos and make content, but in order to kind of just engage with anybody outside of my house. It's, uh, it's something that always kind of happens to me, usually once a year, usually in the winter time. I think I just get tired of being stuck indoors and not really getting to be outside doing the things that I love to do that aren't guitar or drum related. But yeah, I'm kind of going through that right now. So I appreciate all your guys' patience with me and everything and getting back to messages. I feel like I'm starting to perk up a little bit. I just haven't been excited about guitar gear. I was kind of getting excited about drum gear for a minute. And then even that, like I'm not, not really excited about anything right now. So I'm trying to trying to just kind of get through that and get back to feeling motivated because at heart, I'm just a person who loves to, to hustle and be on the grind 24 seven. I know that sounds stupid and cliche, but really that's the type of person I am. If I'm sitting still, then I feel like I'm dying inside and I always love being productive and doing things. And right now I'm just kind of going through a little phase of struggling with that. So again, Appreciate your guys' patience. Appreciate all you guys who are still out there supporting the channel and joining the Facebook group and joining my Patreon. We've got a couple new Patreon members and everything. So thank you guys so much. And also a huge thank you to all you guys who have gone over and subscribe to the drum channel. I've only got two videos over there, but I've got 240 subscribers and the videos are getting like close to 300 views already. So really, really cool. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the community that it has been built around this channel. And honestly, just kind of sitting here talking about it and thinking about it really makes me feel grateful and is already kind of picking my mood back up. So thank you guys so much for all your support. So with all of that personal uh, oversharing out of the way, let's get into your guys' comments for the week. Cajun Worksaws says, man, I really like your reviews. Thanks, man. I really like that you like my reviews. I actually kind of needed that. Thank you. So my buddy Clint asked a question, but I'm gonna go ahead and address it here on viewers comments because the timing was uh, pretty miraculous. As I was just talking to John Fields at PV last night about the tube issues in the world right now. Clint says, with the amount of amps you have, do you worry about the supply of tubes, especially with the Ukraine situation? That is a really good qu <laughs> question, Clint. Uh, I don't know if this video is gonna be demonetized for talking about Ukraine or whatever, but I don't really care either way. For First off, I mean, tubes should really be the least of our, our worries. And I'm not saying that you're wrong for asking that question, Clint. It's a really good question and it's very relevant to this channel and everything. But uh, yeah, the, the things that are going on over there right now are, are just, it, it's, it's literally crazy to me that people are having to flee their homes in Ukraine and everything. And, and people who are literally living a first world type of life have are now fleeing their refugees. They now have nothing and it's, it's basically pretty much been overnight. So that situation over there is nuts. I really hope that it doesn't escalate, you know, for the world's sake, because I just I just have a feeling that it's really not gonna be good if, if it escalates any, any more than it already is. And it's already terrible for the people in Ukraine as well. So my heart goes out to the people in Ukraine and it's just, honestly, it hurts my heart to see that that's going on uh, over there right now. So now, as far as the tube thing, I'm not 100% sure what all of this entails, but I'm pretty sure that right now we, we're we not able to get tubes from Russia. We're not like doing, actively doing commerce with Russia. So correct me if I'm wrong, please. I, I don't want to talk out of my ass. I, I definitely don't 100% know the facts on this, but it really seems like our only source of good tubes right now is Sovtech because they're located in uh, Slovakia, I believe. Now, again, I was talking about this very uh, situation with John Fields last night. And I mean, the, the Shuguang factory, they, they won't be producing tubes until late next year and that's you know if they stay on schedule rebuilding their factory there is a uh, company called PS Vane that is producing tubes over in China at the moment but according to John according to some people that I've talked to their power tubes are okay but the the preamp tubes are not good I can't vouch for that because I've never used any of their tubes before 
but the people that I was speaking to, I trust their judgment and trust that they know what they're talking about. So they're probably not going to be a solid source of tubes for the, and you know, until they develop something really good on the preamp front and kind of, you know, get their manufacturing tighter and everything. So at this point, it's, it's like Sovtech is really the only legit preamp tube manufacturer we have at this point. And, uh, yeah, am I personally nervous with the amount of amps I own about like running out of tubes? No, I have a massive stash of tubes that I have just kind of collected from buying, selling, trading over the years. So I probably have a box full of 50 or 60 preamp tubes that are all just extra tubes. And then I've got at least 10 extra quads of power tubes laying around. So I mean, uh, <laughs> and I've got so many amps that, you know, if, if it ever came down to it, I would just take the tubes out of the amps that I don't really like or play that much and stick them in the amps that would need retubed. But honestly, I, I don't really do that much with tubes anyways. I really don't change them until they, they die and that doesn't happen very often. So I personally am not worried about tubes, but why this does make me worry is because that means that new manufacturers don't have tubes to supply to their amps that they're trying to ship out the doors a la PV. I swear I get multiple comments a week on my 6505 2 video still to this day and I released it three months ago of people asking me when is the 6505 2 coming out? When is the 6505 1992 original coming out? And uh, it's all it all hinges on power tubes right now guys. PV doesn't have power tubes and I just fear that this is going to be another hiccup in the supply chain. I mean transformers are definitely still hard to get for a lot of people right now but it's like pretty soon you're gonna have to add tubes on top of the transformers and I, I mean really you already have because that's what held up the iconic for a while and I know that Sweetwater still hasn't even gotten their iconics because I just recently canceled my order because it was three months behind and they were still waiting on a shipment of iconics because I know that only a few of them made it out the door at EVH, not that many made it out. So yeah, moving forward, I'm, I'm curious. I'm definitely really curious to see. I hope things that don't escalate anymore uh, over in Russia and Ukraine, you know, hopefully we can get back to normal. But in reality, I mean, we, we there's only a couple of solid tube manufacturers in the world and there are a lot of people who need those tubes. And I pretty much just have a feeling unless a new company comes along that decides that they wanna get into tube manufacturing, which I really don't see happening at this point because it's pretty much an old world technology. And uh, you know, there really aren't that many guitar amps being made these days that can support the entire an entire company just to make tubes for guitar amps. So it, it doesn't look good, guys. I mean, it, it really doesn't. I, I feel like it's a good thing that modeling and solid state circuitry is still moving forward to this day because I, I really do get the feeling that, you know, in 20 years, there may not be any more new tube amps. It may be even sooner than that. Who knows? I'm obviously speculating, but it's looking a little dire in the tube world at the moment. So we'll just have to see how everything plays out. We'll have to see, you know, once Shu Guang gets their factory back up, maybe they'll be able to ramp up production and, and be able to, to really fill a ton of orders and kind of get the supply back to normal. I don't really know. But again, I personally am not worried for myself because I have tons of extras and I have tons of amps that I can cannibalize for tubes, but I know that that is not the case for everybody. And I know that uh, not being able to get tubes is definitely going to hinder getting new tube amps out the door. And it's probably gonna discourage manufacturers from making or designing new tube amps if they don't really know what the future of the tube amp market is gonna be, if they're even gonna be able to get tubes to supply for new tube amps. So all things to keep in mind. It's a very interesting question and I'm very curious to see how things uh, move forward on that front. Amir Tax says, man, that EVH is just awesome. I would love to get the 100 watt stealth head one day. He was commenting on my Dover and EVH 5150 uh, 50 watt stealth shootout video that I posted this week. And yeah, I've played that amp in a few videos recently and, and it's just, it's so hard to beat. It's so hard to beat the EVH 50 watt amps, guys. It's it's so hard to beat anything in the 5150 family. I have really, in the last year, just kind of come to realize that uh, the 5150 is is kind of like it for me. I love my Splawn. 
I absolutely love my Mezzabarba stuff, but it's like, it's if I just wanna grab an amp that I know that is gonna sound good, the 5150 is it. And they record well, they cut well live, they're easy to dial in, it's just like, a lot of people over the years have, have always talked crap on the PV5150, a lot of people talk crap on the EVH5150, but you see them everywhere for a reason, and it's because they sound awesome pretty much no matter what. Now, if we didn't have the pricing association with these amps and you just sat it side by side with an amp twice its price, I'm gonna go ahead and say nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna end up picking the EVH over the more expensive amp. I get more comments on the EVH amps on these videos when I use them in pedal demos and shootouts and stuff like that than any of the other amps on my channel. And it's just because they, they just sound good. I remember when I really started branching out in the boutique market I expected all these expensive Friedmans and Bogners and Dietzels to sound better than the 5150 stuff and time after time I was disappointed and it's not because they're bad amps it's just because that sound is just it's such a good sound for so many applications it's such an easy amp to dial in and really I mean it's a sound that we're all used to because that 5150 if you're in the metal community that amp has been used on so many records it's it's just kind of like a sound in your head type thing like you've heard that sound a million times on records that sound awesome so naturally that sound is going to be implanted in your brain and when you're chasing tones of bands you love more than likely they had a 5150 in the mix somewhere so yeah I just I just wanted to respond to that comment because I've really kind of just fallen in love with the EVH stuff all over again especially the the stealth i've been playing that one a lot lately a little scoopy in the mids for my taste at certain points but there if you put it through the right cab man oh it just sounds so good so yeah i agree man that 50 watt stealth sounds incredible right now i have the 100 watt evh and the el34 100 watt stealth i'm searching for a 100 watt 6l6 stealth but the prices have just gone through the roof, so I'm just I'm trying to be patient and trying to locate a deal on that amp because I would love to get one in here for my own personal collection and I would love to get it on the channel too. So if you guys see one of those amps for under 1700 bucks, please let me know. I know the common going price at the moment is like $1,800, which is why I would like to pay a little bit less than $1,800, but uh, I think I need to get that amp in here soon because the 50 watt just you know blows me away every time. Yeah. I love 5150s. Wayne Lewis says, I just bought a two x 12 carving cabinet with no speakers. I put two V30 in and I can't believe how great it sounds. He is commenting on my obscure gear video for the Carvin High Energy 212. A lot of you guys watched that video and I got a lot of great feedback on that thing. So I'm definitely going to do more videos like that in the future. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the kind of nerdy deep dive of me taking the speakers out and dissecting what the cab's made of and the construction and everything else and giving you guys sound samples. So that ultimately, I, I love stuff like that. So I'm definitely gonna do more videos like that. Uh, I've got a couple cabs already here on deck waiting to be demoed in that manner. So I'm definitely going to do that for you guys very soon. And glad that you guys enjoy nerding out on the same types of things that I enjoy nerding out on. Now with that being said, yeah, Carvin, I have four carving cabs now. I've got a legacy cab that came loaded with the V30s. That's front loaded with the metal grate. That was the Steve Vai signature cab to his legacy signature amp. Sounds absolutely awesome. I have two of the Carvin uh, V412, I believe the model is. It's sitting right over here. It's got a metal grate front. It was supposed to be paired with the V3 amplifiers that Carvin released. And they sound good with the V3 because the V3 is very spiky and very ice picky, but those speakers are pretty neutral. They're a little bit soft on the top end. So in the one cab, I ended up mixing two V30s in with the two Carvin G12 T100s or GT12 100. A GT100 something there's something like that but they're British series speakers and they kind of balance each other out really nicely so that sounds really good I may end up going full V30 in that cab and then leaving the other cab as the full GT100 speaker loaded cab just to have a little bit of variety between the two I think I paid like $180 a piece for those cabs they are 100% plywood they are front loaded those speakers certainly are not bad they're not nearly as bad as something you're gonna find as like a Behringer cab that's made out of all MDF or one of the Bugera cabs around the same price. Those cabs all seem to sell around 150, 200 bucks. Uh, if you find a Carvin in that price range, grab it because I can guarantee you that the construction is gonna be miles better than anything Behringer 
or Bugera or a lot of the cheaper brands that you tend to see in that price range, like some of the cheaper, terrible Marshall cabs or the crate cabs or, or whatever, yeah. If you, see a, if you see a carving cab and you're in the market for a cab, don't sleep on them because they are constructed extremely well and they are one of the few cabs that I would recommend buying with the intent to maybe swap the speakers or upgrade the speakers down the line because the construction alone of those cabs, they are worth the price for sure. Ian Taylor comments and says, awesome amp demo as always. I have watched it a few times now. It prompted me to look further into these amps. And I realized that I need one. I found one on eBay and scooped it up, which I am eagerly awaiting. Thanks again. I think this might be my forever amp. Ian is commenting on my Metabarba Skill 30 amp demo that I did. And dude, I'm so glad that the demo helped you decide on an amp because ultimately that's what this channel is for. The fact that I get so many people telling me how helpful these demos are and everything, that's what means the most to me. You know, as the channel grows and I get more attention from like bigger brands and stuff like that, that's really cool, but ultimately, it really comes down to making content that actually helps you guys out, that gives you a good idea of how this gear sounds here in the room. Obviously, my personal biases are going to come into play, but I try to make that as obvious to you guys as I possibly can by saying this is not to my taste and not this is a crappy piece of gear because some other reviewers out there will definitely just say that something sucks if they don't like it, as opposed to saying, I don't personally like this for my uses, but I can see where it would be useful. Um, you know, I, I just try to make reviews that are as transparent as possible for you guys. And really, ultimately, I'm not out there to market these items or these amps for anybody. I'm out there to give you guys an honest and transparent sounding demo so it helps you guys be able to make a decision or get ideas in your head of, of what amps that it is that you're looking for that, you know, trying to get you closer to the sound in your head. And I get people all the time leaving positive comments on my channel and telling me that my videos helped. And that just means the world to me, guys. That, that means that the channel is achieving the goal that I set out for it to achieve, which is creating a space where you can kind of go and compare a whole bunch of different amps that a lot of other people aren't gonna make demos for because they're older or more obscure, you know, or not current not in production. I'm, I'm just out here trying to make demos of every amp that I can get my hands on. So hopefully, you know, if, if, if a video of an obscure amp helps one person, then it was worth it to me. And I genuinely mean that because for a long time, I was that person out there searching for videos on PV VTMs and PV triple X's and Wagner Uber shawls and, you know, all sorts of other stuff where it's like, there were, there were a couple videos out there, but like, it was really hard to kind of figure out what was processed in a mix and what was just like a raw playthrough and get the person thoughts on how it compared to other amps and everything. Not a lot of people out there were doing that, so I kind of wanted to create the channel as a source, as you know, somewhere that if you're shopping for an amp, you know you can stop in on my channel, search for that amp, and you'll get a good demo of it and maybe a head-to-head -head shootout comparing it to another amp that you might be curious about. So I think it's really cool that people are using the channel as a tool to try and help them figure out what amp that they're searching for next or if the amp that they have their eye on is right for them or not. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just glad it's helpful, guys. That, that really picks my mood up when I get comments like that. So thank you for leaving those comments and uh, thank you for supporting the channel. And with that, we're gonna call it a day here because that's about all the energy I had for videos today. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as always, leave your comments on the videos and hopefully I'll be able to feature your comment on the next episode of Viewers Comments. If you wanna support the channel and what it is that I do here down in the description of this video are all my support links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link. You know the drill. Click on that link, get yourself something, it costs you nothing extra, and it helps my channel grow. I would really appreciate it. Or become one of these awesome people here by joining my Patreon and supporting the channel that way. I will love you forever, whether you like it or not. And finally, consider becoming a member of the Belligerent Amateur Community by joining my Discord server and Facebook group down below in the description. And then also, if you like drums, head down there and subscribe to my drum channel because I'm going to have more stuff coming there too. Thank you guys for your support. Thanks for your patience with me. And thanks for hanging out. As always, I appreciate you all. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time.